What do I hit? Yeah, how is this? How long do you anticipate, Clint? Oh, mate, I said four to six. I'm trying to get back in yeah. a couple of weeks. Next so. week. Yeah. yeah, next week, mate. You get yeah. in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Clint, where, where, were you, where were you born? You're, you're a Sydney boy, but... Yeah, Sydney boy, mate. I was born at, uh, at Westmead. You know, yeah. I grew up in um, Fairfield, mate. Uh, yeah, so right. Southwest of Sydney there. and Yeah. Oh, I loved it. What sort of kid were you? I'm a guess. Disruptive in class? A lot. Yeah. Mate, I, was, I was just a rat bag, mate. I was just, I just loved mucking around and, mm. and roaming the streets. <laughs> were, you good, were you a good student? Um, some days. You know, yeah. I just wanted to get out and I had to keep moving around. I'm still like that now. I've got to do something. I just can't sit still. Yeah. Were, you always, um, were you always the biggest kid in the class or the biggest kid in the team? Yeah, I, was, I was a lot skinnier back then. Yeah. I was a skinny kid and I was very tall, so... Yeah. yeah. He's a big boy. Which one are you, Clem? <laughs> one right there in the middle, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, I... I I'm, That's 14, I'm, I was 14, yeah. I think. Um, I remember talking to Paul Harrigan about this, because it's hard to be the smallest kid in the team. But I remember Chief saying, it's hard to be the biggest kid as well. You know, because you're the one targeted by a lot of times the opposition parents on the sideline. You know, get into him, smash him. Did you cop much of that? Oh, a little bit, mate. You know, a lot of, a lot of the, um, parents just wanted to get the big kid down and, and get yeah. into him, but... You know, it was all it was all good to have fired me up and yeah you know so you're a real sporting prodigy so you uh, represented in rugby league of course but state level softballer um, and you're identified by the Sydney Swans and you actually played in their academy side um, do you ever consider a career in AFL because I know the Swans were really keen on you yeah mate I just love playing sport as a kid and uh, AFL didn't mind it because you know, I was running around, I was just tackling mm. the kids. I was playing rugby league and, and kicking the ball, so mm. um, yeah, I enjoyed it. And um, I obviously had a choice to make when I was about 14 and 15. I just love rugby league, I just love the history, and yeah. I just love playing it. Um, you and your wife Chloe, you met at Westfield Sports High. Yep. What was it about you that Chloe found so irresistible? <laughs> was it <laughs> romance, good looks? I think it was a big hair, mate. I had a big mop. I had a big, I had a big mullet, so I just shot around school. I think I was, I think I was killing it. And Why'd you shave it off then? She didn't like it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I had stuff in there. It wasn't, it wasn't clean at all. It was just yeah, it was yeah. a ready look. Now, uh, you've got, you got three kids. You've got three boys, David Jr., Jackson and, and young Cooper. Cooper was going to come down here, but he went to a party early today, we believe, and yeah, he was, wasn't in the mood. No, he rid himself off, mate, this morning. So. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Clem, you... you uh, you had your kids, you and Chloe, when you, you, you were young, and, and, and there's benefits in that. I had my boys when they were, they were fairly young, and the benefits are, you know, when they celebrate in their 18th and their 21st, you're going to be a relatively young man still, which is great. Um, but it's tough, it's tough to be a father when you're still a kid yourself, you know. Was it a challenge? Yeah, definitely, mate. I was only 19 when I had Cooper, and um, it was my first year in first grade, hurt my knee, I had a lot of injuries that year, and I thought, you know, What's going to happen the rest of my life, you know? But I thought rugby league was going to be there, but I don't, you know, what, don't what, know. yeah, you just don't know at that, that time, that young age, you know, where my headspace was. So um, I got over it, and you know, they're the ones that put me through it. You know, mm. I was thinking of them to make them proud and, mm. and give them the best upbringing as well. Now you signed at the Bulldogs at 15, uh, made your NRL debut when you're 19, and Bulldogs are having a tough couple of years, but mate, they're a real great club. Like when the Knights started, they based themselves off the Bulldogs and Storm copied a lot of what the Bulldogs did. Um, what, what, did what did you learn at the Bulldogs? Because they educate their footballers very, very well. You know, I can't, I can't thank the Bulldogs enough. You know, they've made me the player I am today. You know, they put me, the coaches and the players they put there, they helped me progress as a footy player. You know, James Graham, I can't, you know, I've said it before, I can't thank him enough mm. for my development, you know, what he's taught me, the game of rugby league and and off the field as well, you know, so... Mm. No, that's very, it's a great club. Coming into the first grade, uh, into the first grade side as a young bloke at 19, Des, Desi Hasler. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen him do? <laughs> oh, man, I might have been... I might have been my fourth game. We were playing in Perth, mm. and um, I think we, we were training shit out or something. Like, after the captain's run, he, he brought us all back in, and he just gave this almighty spray, and he said something about Billy Slater, and he goes... I want you to rip the limbs off Billy Slater. <laughs> he, just kept, he just kept elaborating on that. Just that, just that, that voice. I'll never forget it. And when I talked to like the boy, the boy, some of the old boys and the coaches in that room that day, they just they just getting stitches every time. So yeah, he's, you, he's good for a spray. You mentioned Jimmy Graham. I mean, it's so good for a young bloke coming in and packing down alongside James Graham. But what, what did you learn? What, what, what did he teach you? 
how to be a consistent footballer. You mm. know, you can't play one game, one good game, and you know, you can't, don't, don't be seen for the next four weeks. And how to prepare for a footy game, how to be mentally tough. You know, I was just in awe of him when he, when he, when he came to the club, and I still am, you know, he's, mm. what he's done. Um, I just love the way he plays footy, and, you know, those guys at Dragons are so lucky to have, because the way he prepares for games, how he trains, and um, it's, it's pretty special to, to see. Let's detour for a second, because I spoke to a couple of um, former teammates of yours who had the displeasure of rooming with you. They said you suffer horrendous night terrors. Yes. Where in the middle of the night you'll just get up and you're screaming. Um, what's, that, what's that about, Clem? I mean, where, where, where's this come from? I don't know. It's, oh, it's happened since I was a kid, you know. I've just, I've just had them, you know. I'd just get up and start screaming. There'd just be holes in the wall next to my bed there. I'd just sleep right next to this wall and there's big holes in there just getting up, kicking and... Um, yeah, my wife and my kids hear me screaming all the night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's going on with that tonight? What's happening? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They That's got it. beat again, huh? Yeah. Oh, so. Do you yeah. remember? Do you remember the, the next day? What you experienced or anything? Oh, it's just, just terrified. But I was just, I'm just petrified. What, yeah, what was happening to me? So, um, yeah. there, they just think that their dad's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about it. We're all a little bit weird. Yeah. Have you had? Have you been psychoanalysed? Has anyone ever gone and said, seen someone about these night terrors and said? I think I might have to. I might have to go see. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to go see someone and see some stuff on the head. Or, yeah. or, 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 send, or let me know if you're going. I'll send Finch you. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Clem, how how tough, tough was it for you leaving the Bulldogs? Yeah, it was one of the, I mean, it was one of the hardest things in my life to this day. You know, to to pick my family up and and move to another another town. And mm. uh, I'm a, I was a massive dog. Like I'm still a tragic dog support. I was like, yeah. man, I was I was a fanatic when I was a kid, and you know, still didn't support the club. And um, you know, stuff going on you know, with me, you know, and just getting me my mind, my mindset, and my health, you know, right. And I thought the best opportunity for me was to come up to Newley and. And raise my kids. Why Newcastle? Um, I just thought I looked at the roster and uh, I've, I worked with Brownie before in Origin and just the way he knows rugby league, you know, he's teaching me, you know, teaching me new things and the support system out there as well. Yeah. The Knights of coaching staff is is amazing and you know Brownie's teaching me how to catch the ball. You know, I've caught the ball this one way my whole career. He's you know, he's teaching me how to catch it another way and the subtle differences. Yeah, just little things like that, mate. And. Mm. And I'm big on that sort of stuff to keep learning as a footy player and progress as a footy player as well. Um, it can be a tough school up there, like it, but the crowd, mate, they've fallen in love with you. In that Roosters game, you're the only bloke I've ever seen get a standing ovation when you get sent to the Symbian for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> where, where are the side at, Clem? Because, you know, the other day going to Melbourne, you're looking at seven wins on the trot. Um, but no side, no side can really, you know pull you back or give you an adjustment like the Melbourne Storm. Where, where are the, do you consider that you blokes to be contenders in 2019? Fair dinkum, oh, I, think, I, think, I think we are. and uh, I think yesterday was a reality check for us. You know, we, mm. It was disappointing. It was hard to watch, man. I was screaming and, and carrying on at home. But that night terrors? Or? <laughs> I, think, I think they gave me night terrors okay. that night. So, um, yeah. you know, I think that was a good, good reality check for us yesterday. And, mm. you know, that's the, that's the benchmark, Melbourne. And... Um, We've got to be better and we'll, we'll take that on board and, um, yeah, we'll keep learning from that. You've, broke, uh, you've hurt the wrist, so um, big opportunity for young Daniel Saifudi, your Knights teammate. Are you, you going to bump him, give him a phone call and have a yarn to him about his uh, origin debut? It's a, a big task. You know, not coming off the bench, he's going to be the starting prop. Yeah, mate, I'm that, I'm that proud and, and, and happy for him, mate. I was, I was almost in tears, you know, when, he, when I found out he, he made the side and... Um, he deserves it, mate. He's worked, he's worked really hard and, you know, six weeks ago he wouldn't even have thought uh, he'd be playing Origin, you know, he's coming off the bench and, mate, if you watch the games from six weeks ago mm. of him playing and starting the footy game, it's, it's been amazing and uh, I'll definitely give him a call just to see where he's head out during the week and, mm. and calm him into the game because, mate, it's, it's a big opportunity for him and I'm excited to watch him. Mate, Clem, thanks for coming on tonight. Really appreciate uh, thanks, it. Buddy. David Clemmer, everyone.